Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. were absolutely lied to. I'm going to try my best to make this a success in Vancouver. We need to subpoena the financials or something. And I think anytime you know you leave something undone, it haunts you. The truth may be out there, but it is difficult to find. The public deserves to know the truth about why the Grizzlies left town. And you know that film is going to be good because David Pratt <laughs> is in it. A cat, Jamie, is going to join us in a bit here. Just a reminder that all of our guests today are brought to you by the Bayside Oceanfront Resort. Book your island getaway today at BaysideOceanfrontResort.com or call 250-248-8333. Uh, We've been talking about it uh, all morning. Uh, about Kat Jamie, Canadian filmmaker. She's made four films on the Vancouver Grizzlies. The latest is The Grizzly Truth. It makes its debut at the Vancouver International Film Festival uh, October 1st. That's this Saturday. It also uh, is being screened on the 5th as well. And Kat joins us now. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How are you, Don? Uh, Hi, Rick. Hi. Very well. Thanks, Kat. T tell us, first of all, uh, we mentioned four films on the Grizzlies. What's your fascination? Where did it start with the Vancouver Grizzlies? Started when I was, you know, I was six when the Grizzlies came and I was just totally, I fell in love with them. I think, you know, the 90s was, you know, MJ was, uh, was a hit and my brother fell in love with the game and I wanted to be exactly like my brother. So it just, it was a natural, natural thing for me to just fall in love with the Grizzlies. Um, but they've been an obsession um, ever since, and I haven't been obviously haven't been able to let the fact that the team left go, because I've sort of made it my lifelong mission to to tell this team's history and their story. So we find out about your fascination uh, with the Grizzlies. How did you get into filmmaking? Um, I come. I actually come from a family of filmmakers. My grandfather, our uh, Lola, uh, uh, in the Philippines, was a, a director. He's the youngest director of his time in in the Philippines. His older brother was a producer. His his father was a producer, and they own one of the three major film studios in the Philippines called Premier Productions. And so I grew up with a, a camera pointed at me and my cousins. A every moment of my life has been documented, um, and so I just kind of followed suit. So documenting things has always just come very naturally to me. Um, and then I went to you know film school at UBC. Um, and then I uh, worked at the National Film Board of Canada and just this was this was like the ultimate dream story that I wanted to tell the story of the Grizzlies. So I'm, I, you know, I feel very lucky to, to get this opportunity. And meanwhile, Rick and I are working at a basement on Beatty Street. Uh, what was your reaction when the Grizzlies left? You know, I honestly didn't understand what that meant, like the impact that it had. Um, I was sad. I know I was sad, but I was like, but we'll get another team. Because I was I was 12 years old and I didn't realize you know that once the NBA leaves a city like it's very hard for the team to come back. So I think you know in high school that's when I started to you know start to connect the dots and um, and then obviously when I got older I just started to realize okay this might be a very difficult task and I'm a filmmaker and I I believe in the power of film and so to start conversations to start movements um, and. Uh, so I, you know, one of the goals of this film is to help start a conversation going to prove that Vancouver deserves another chance and another shot at the NBA. So when you, you did interviews, Stu Jackson, uh, Big Country, uh, Sharif, uh, Mike Bibby, uh, the whole nine yards. What, what's your takeaway? What, what happened here? Who's to blame? Because uh, essentially we all want to know why, you know, and who's to blame. So uh, what did you come up with? I learned a lot. I will say that I learned a lot. Um, I kept an open mind. I think as a, a good, you know, a filmmaker, especially in a documentary filmmaker, you have to approach your subjects with empathy and with uh, a level of understanding and understanding that these are human beings. Um, and I, my goal with this film was to really give get these people that are part of the Grizzlies dialogue that fans, you know, often talk about and often blame, give them a chance to have the floor to 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 share how they felt and to share why they decide to do things the way that the way you know they did 
Um, so I definitely, I, I, I don't want to spoil anything because I, you, mm. you know, you definitely have to come out to the premiere on October 1st. It's going to be a the very first Grizzlies reunion in 20 years. We have another screening October 5th if you can't make that. But I will say like, you know, I did, I learned a lot and I, I changed like I, the way that I feel about the Grizzlies has changed throughout, through making this film. What do you, you, you brought up the fact that the Grizzlies could work in Vancouver again someday. Uh, you know, obviously, it's a long time since they've left. What makes you think it could work in Vancouver again? Just, I mean, you know, when the NBA comes back for their like their preseason games, like we sell out in like so fast. There's lineups, you know, when Finding Big Country premiered a few years ago, like there was it just felt like that to me was just like oh my god, like the city was like buzzing with a you know with grizzly fever, um, and I think the game has grown. The 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 plants that the seeds that the Grizzlies planted years ago have really blossomed. Um, and you can see there's so many, uh, all the different leagues that are kind of run today in the city are from, are, are like, they grew up with the Grizzlies, right? So like, it, this is a product of the Vancouver Grizzlies. Like they, they inspired so many kids like myself who are now grown adults. Um, and uh, yeah, I just feel like we have, we have the interest, we have the fan support. Vancouver is not just a hockey city, and I think we can we we definitely could have a, a, an NBA team here or a WNBA team. I will say that as well. Yeah, Kat, uh, let's go back a couple of answers ago. You you say your opinion of the whole mess ha has changed. How, how so? Again, I um, that's a good question. I mean. I have a better understanding of what happened. And I think that just happens when you actually talk to the people who were involved um, and give them a chance to, you know, to share their side of the story. Um, and I, I think we did probably 50, 50 some, over 60 sit down or 50 sit down interviews. And Don was, mm -hmm. was one of those interviews. Um, so many more Zoom calls, so many more phone calls. I have, Try, tried to track down literally anyone um, who worked for the Grizzlies, that be that players, uh, dancers, uh, you know, people who worked at the concession at GM Place, um, ball boys, ball boy, ball girls, uh, ball boy managers. Like the list goes on and on. Um, I have like a spreadsheet that's just like lists everyone that I've contacted. Um, you know, I've even gotten in touch with the gentleman who made the suits for the Vancouver Grizzlies uh, while he was while the Grizzlies were in town. So if you had any like any small relation to the Vancouver Grizzlies, I like I probably tried to talk to you. And, and Kat, is this true? Is Steve Francis coming to Vancouver? The secret's out. Yeah, he's he's coming to Vancouver along with uh, George Lynch, Tony Massenburg, and Tony Harvey. So it's going to be the very first Grizzlies reunion. Steve Francis is joining. He he is excited to come, and I am excited to share his story on the big screen. You know, he is part of. He's one of the main subjects of the film, and uh, you know, uh, this, the, at the screening, there's going to be a red carpet event at one thirty. Uh, screening starts at two p.m. and then after the screening. There is a basketball event uh, where have, there is going to be like a public Vancouver Grizzlies reunion um, at the Queen Elizabeth Plaza. VIF and Basketball BC have collaborated to, they're going to build an outdoor basketball court. Um, and there's going to be games being played uh, by um, uh, the Basketball BC teams. There's going to be a dunk contest that's going to be judged by me and the NBA players. You'll get a chance to, you know, hopefully meet some of them. So I encourage if, you know, if you are into basketball or the Grizzlies or if you're a childhood fan, like come out and you like this is Grizzlies history and you don't want to be you don't want to miss it you want to be a part of it. Well, it's Vancouver sports history. Uh, uh, and uh, are are people welcome to come down there and boo Steve Francis? <laughs> <laughs> I you know what I have a feeling that after hearing his story, uh, our tune of him will change. Vancouver's tune of him will change. And you know that was like my goal with finding big country. Obviously, big country mm -hmm. took a lot of heat, and I feel like. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who came up to me after that screening who's, you know, uh, whose opinions of, of him changed. And so, you know, I would suggest that, I, first of all, I feel like, you know, we have to show Steve, you know, uh, that Vancouver can be, we can be, you know, we're a classy city. Um, and, you know, we obviously want to make him feel welcome and treat him with respect. But I do think that it'll be, it will be healing a uh, healing opportunity for both Vancouverites and for Steve Francis. Yeah. So this is a moment I feel that again is is part of grizzly's history
Yeah, like you say, he's a human being, and he yeah. was a young man at the time, in all seriousness. I know yeah, we took our shots at him uh, uh, earlier, but he was getting some bad advice, and there were bad decisions made by people a lot older uh, than him that should have known better. Kat, mm -hmm. uh, October 1st, October 5th, thanks so much for this. We sure Thank appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, yeah. Don. Thank thanks, you. Rick. You bet.